Hi guys, Andy here, here with my Galaxy Note 3. Um, I'm a bit late to the party with the Note 3, it got released in September 2013. Um, and at the time, I just couldn't really afford it. You know, generally I buy all the devices that I review um, and then hopefully sell them on for not too much of a loss. And at the time, I just couldn't really, couldn't really do it. Um, you could say I'd had a bit of a bad experience with the initial Note. Well, I wouldn't say a bad experience, I just I decided it was too big for me, I couldn't really cope with that sort of size. Uh, so I didn't use it for long, um, and I've, I didn't try the Note 2, um, and so I wasn't going a long ways out of my way to get hold of a Note 3, I suppose, is the, is the long and short of it. But then at Christmas I ordered the Oppo N1, mainly because it's a Cyanogen mod phone. I don't think I tweaked how big it was, I mean the Oppo N1 was a massive phone, have a look at some of the other videos I did on it. But actually, yes, I used that for a week, I really got used to the size and I quite enjoyed having that screen real estate to, uh, to use. So I thought to myself, well, the Note 3 is the device that everybody loves, and so many people use them as their main devices of this sort of, um, you know, people, I think Leo Laporte, maybe Marcus Brownlee, I'm not sure. Uh, there's a lot of people use the Note 3 as their main device, and a lot of people sing its praises, saying what an amazing device it is. So I thought, I need to give it a go, I need to have a look at it, I need to see what the, what the deal is. Thankfully, the good people at clove.co.uk lent me this to try. I say thankfully, um, now I want to buy one, so uh, <laughs> we'll see, we'll see what goes on there. But um, yeah, Clove lent me this to, to try, do check them out, clove.co.uk, uh, good, uh, good UK seller of devices. Um, so they sent me, they sent me this last week, uh, I did the unboxing video that you'll have seen, and uh, it's time to let you know my thoughts. I did, I did think right from the beginning, when I took the Note 3 out of the box, I almost had flashbacks to my Galaxy S2 unboxing. I don't know, you might have seen that. My most watched video on the internet is actually with the Hemadroids channel rather than this channel. Um, but I was amazed when I took the device out of the box how light and thin the S2 was. The same sort of feelings I had when I unboxed the, the Note 3. It's, it's a huge device but it only weighs 168 grams and it's 8.3 millimeters thin. So having come from the Oppo M1 which was a much bigger device much heavier, 200 plus grams, to then take this out of the box, it just it felt so thin and light, really quite impressive. And I think generally the design to me is quite strange. It, to me it looks like an S2 that's bigger. So the S3 was very rounded, uh, the S4 still quite rounded, the edges and the corners and everything, but the, the Note 3, I mean okay yeah there is, it is rounded, but it's still a squarer design. Um, which just reminds me so much of the S2, and the S2 probably was my favourite design, so the Note 3 got off to a good start with uh, reminding me in that way. Um, let's have a look in a bit more detail though now. So aside from the actual size, one of the first things you notice about the Note 3 is the, the, the material on the back cover. It's kind of a false leather soft touch. Um, and it looks kind of odd, I suppose. Initially, you know, you see all the stitching around the outside there. Initially, you think, what on earth's going on there? But actually, it's got a really nice feel to it. Um, it makes it have a good grip. So, okay, it's moving on my hand there, but that's quite an angle I'm putting it, and it's it's clinging on for dear life. You know, it, it gives a good bit of grip. If you if you put your phone, if you put this on your knee, it's not going to slide off. Okay, moves around on a wooden table. Even then, not not massively. Um, one thing you will have heard there is this, the camera does stick out a little bit, which I know really bugs some people, and they worry about the lens scratching, but, you know, they're not idiots, these designers. The lens is slightly indented in, so that it has got enough that sticks out that protects it. Um, and I know some people, they prefer to put a case on, therefore the lens isn't sitting on the desk, but it's not sitting on the desk in the first place. The outside bit of the, the lens is, so if you're gonna put it on something sharp, with it have a, if it has a case on or not, that sharp thing's going to poke into the lens. So to me, that's not a massive. That's not a massive issue. Um, what it does do though is make the device rock a little bit. Again, to some people, this probably won't matter. I've mentioned it in a lot of my videos because almost all phones do this. It's it's not quite as bad at the base, which is where you, I might be typing. But still, I just wish I just wish there was a device that sat flat on the table and I could operate it without it jiggling about like that. Anyway. Um, one of the other things you notice when you turn the screen on is how thin the bezel is. It's particularly along the bottom, so there's buttons there. That's where the back button and the menu button is, and obviously you can see the, the home button. But that, that's really quite thin, and actually there's times where I worry because my thumb is bigger than the gap is at the bottom. Um, 
which I suppose is how they managed to get a 5.7 inch screen into a device that's actually not hugely different in size. If I bring in my S4, okay, my S4 has got a case on. That's not massively different. Whip it out of the case for a second. So the S4 on the left, the Note 3 on the right, yes, it is bigger, obviously. You're not going to be thinking, oh, which one's bigger, I'm not sure. Clearly, the Note 3 is bigger, but not not drastically so. Considering, I think this was a 5 inch screen, isn't it? Against a 5.7. That's, that's not a huge bit of difference. So I think they've done a really good job with keeping the bezel as thin as possible all the way around to maximise the screen space and minimise the phone bulk, I suppose, really. Um, there's a slight lip around the edge of the device as well. That silver metallic looking thing is has got a, again a, a doubt I can show this on the video I don't know if it's going to focus well enough for you to be able to see but to me that's good it does again it lifts the screen off if you put it over down it lifts the screen off just that millimeter or so so the screen itself is on what's sitting on the desk um, it's a little bit odd when your finger gets the edge you, know, you do feel you do feel that lip but not not particularly uh, an issue by any means um, now one of the other things about the Note 3 that I thought I was a kind of, what's the opposite of a deal breaker, a clincher, a, like a key feature, an amazing feature, um, is a stylus. Now when I pull it out straight away you get the options on the screen, we'll look into them a little bit more later on. Um, you know I thought actually I could really make use of the stylus, it would be really quite handy. Um, we'll, like I said we'll come to that later on, but you, basically if you don't want the stylus, you don't need the stylus, I wouldn't worry, you really don't notice it. You know, I used it for a few days, almost forgetting the stylus was there. Um, yeah, you feel like there's a little, tiny little bit of a lump as it sticks out slightly, but then, you know, you basically need that. Um, but yeah, it's not, it's not, if you're not going to use it, I wouldn't be thinking, oh, I won't get it because the stylus is there. You really wouldn't notice. And I believe if you, if you take the stylus out and leave it, it does, it does have an, yeah, it's more, more than arm's width, unfortunately. There is some kind of sort of alarm. If you leave the stylus somewhere, it will, the phone will tell you. Um, one of the other things is, because it, they've managed to cram the 5.7 inches into this size, it does actually fit in your pocket without any problems. So I can fit it into my pocket. There's enough gap. I can sit down comfortably. Unlike the M1, which almost poked out my, my trouser pocket. I mean, I've got big trousers. Um, but the N3, the Note 3, does fit in quite I think I would say comfortably. If you're a smaller child, so I'm 6'3", that's what I mean, I've got big pockets. Um, so I suppose actually I should do it. I should do some measurements. 6'3", maybe this is like a normal phone. Maybe you guys are, I don't know, 5'8", five, 5'7". Five, this is the same as an S4 would be to you. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, so then I'm going to whip the back off briefly. I mentioned how it's very similar design to the uh, S2, the back in the same way it looks very much like an S2 back so it's kind of odd that it's got this false leather but it's actually it's thin and plasticky as that's that um, now I'm going to take the battery out for a moment so you can see the huge big battery 3200 milliamp hour battery uh, lasts very well we'll come to that later on and then we see here the sim card slot and the micro SD card slot I was actually confused initially I was thinking what on earth is that and I was doesn't fit in there, um, but yeah. You, so you get the micro, uh, the micro sim goes in there, and the SD card can go above it. Now it's not spring loaded like some. So at first I had a bit of trouble. You basically just have to press in with your nail and try and scrape it down like that. Look, and then pull, and there we go. Uh, let's pop it back together. So oh, I should have said, while well, we've got the back off, I could have pointed out. So the, the processor, well, I can point out, I don't know if I can see them. But anyway, the processor is the Snapdragon 800 as the CPU and the Adreno 330 GPU, which is kind of, at the moment, the, I suppose, what you would expect, basically. Not as a minimum, but kind of as a standard for a top-end phone. Um, it does have a USB 3 cable, which I'll show you very quickly. You might see it in the unboxing. like so. Is that going to focus? So it's like a, like a regular USB with a little extra bit on the side which goes in the bottom thusly. Now I thought that might mean we get quicker charging from this cable. You don't. You still get a, at most 2 amp charge which you can get from 
uh, uh, basically just regular, a regular USB. Uh, if you're worried, oh, well I haven't got those cables, I've got a normal micro USB, you will see the normal USB, micro USB still fits in even without the little bit of side and it works as normal so you don't have to go around changing all of your cables. Um, and in fact, so as I say, you don't get any faster charging. All you really benefit from is faster, uh, faster uh, data transfer when plugging into your computer. But do people still plug? The, actually, I say that I did plug my, I did plug it into my computer earlier to get a video off. So yeah, I suppose you do. I was going to say, do people still plug plug their, f their phones into the computer via USB? Very, very 2012. I would have thought. Uh, you know, generally people use AirDroid and stuff like that. I, I would have thought, but I, yeah, funny enough. Then thinking back, I did it this morning. So fair enough. Um, having said that, I didn't use the special cable because that's not what's plugged into my computer. I always have, I always have a cable plugged in, and this is the one that's always plugged in. So I just plug that in and, and transfer the file off. Um, so there you go. Is the USB three an extra um, kind of? But I don't really make any use of it. Let's move on to the speaker. Now the speaker, if you can see, is just in the base there, pointing out of the bottom which seems to now be the trend, well, I say now the trend, two devices, the two devices I use have now got it, the speakers pointing out the bottom rather than out of the back. Um, and the speaker on this thing really is quite amazing. Red flag for the Superman thing, if you ask me, because that was taunting. Yeah. Okay, what's gonna happen in Seattle? I have no idea, Stephen, truthfully. So I'm just gonna go with my preseason, and I'm not doing it to be spiteful. Just the volume, you maybe don't hear it too well off that, let's try that. <laughs> Now, I'm never sure quite how well that's going to come across on a video, but that is one of the loudest, clearest, best speakers that I've listened to, I think, from a mobile device. The Moto G's is very loud, maybe as loud as this. I mean, my testing actually showed it being slightly louder by half a decibel. Um, but that seemed to be a bit of a spike rather than a constant. This generally as a whole probably averaged a higher volume. Um, it passes the kettle test. When I'm making my breakfast and I put the kettle on, I'm playing a podcast, I can carry on making my toast and the kettle boils, I can still hear the podcast. To me, that's actually quite a big deal. Um, it means I don't have to pair it with my Bluetooth speaker each morning. Well, not pair it up, but connect it to my Bluetooth speaker each morning. Really, it's very loud. Have a look at the, uh, the sound test video that I did from this and you'll see the, the decibels it produces on a, as a constant. Um, actually, very, very good. So... What else? Good news is it will take 4G. You would think that would be a given, but the Oppo N1 didn't. So uh, 4G, I've got some very good speeds on this with the E SIM that you saw earlier. Um, the screen, so I've mentioned it's 5.7 inches. It, obviously, it's 1980 by sorry, 1920 by 1080, uh, which that calculates as 386 pixels per inch. It's a Super AMOLED display, obviously behind the old Corning Gorilla Grass grass glass um, and much like the Samsung Galaxy S4 the screen I think looks amazing you get good deep dark blacks um, but co vibrant colorful popping sort of reds um, I don't think too much some people don't like the Super AMOLED they think it's too rich it's too uh, the colors pop too much almost I suppose but I, th I think that's a pretty amazing screen um, I mentioned the processor as you can see how swift fast it's funny, I, went, I did go back to using my uh, Nexus 5 yesterday. There's something about the Nexus 5, maybe it's just a pure Android, that just makes it feel slicker. And I thought, yeah, no more lag. The Note 3 lags a bit. Then I picked the Note 3 back up again, and actually I don't, I don't really see any lag in that either. So, I mean, it's got 3 gig of RAM, and it makes use of it, basically. Oh, was there a slight bit there? Did it miss one of my slides? Um, yeah, very slick, very smooth. It also has Bluetooth 4.0, the low energy version. It has obviously has NFC and it does have uh, an infrared port. I guess that's it at the top there, look. Okay, then the camera. Samsung uh, making quite a name for themselves with, I would say, very good cameras. And I don't think the there's any, uh, I think this is a, a good example. It has very quick, oh, it's not focusing, come on. I was going to say very quick shutter, but actually that went into HDR mode, obviously, so it took a little bit longer to take the picture and process. But even then, for HDR, 
that in, in itself was very quick. Um, if we have a look at the settings, one thing, I've got to be honest, I didn't actually realise uh, until I saw a different video this morning that the Note 3 will film in Ultra HD 4K, which is double your regular 1080p. So there's 1080p, look, named so because of the, the depth. And there's 4K, which is the 2160p. So you can record videos at 4K resolution. However, you cannot record in dual camera mode or take pictures while recording. Um, there's also there's no video stabilization. So actually, I think if we go back to if we go back to 1080p, you've got video stabilization. You go to 4K mode, it just can't do that um, because you know obviously the sensor is at its very limit at that point. So it can't deal with things like you taking pictures as well. It can't do the video stabilization because it's got no room to. To move, to move its image within the sensor, if that makes sense, because the sensor's stretched to the maximum. Um, I guess also the processing power of be able to do these other things is probably pushing it too much as well. But, so, 4K, very cool. I have uploaded a sample to YouTube, whether or not really many people can watch that and appreciate that, because probably most people's monitors and TVs are limited to 1080p at this point. Um, but I guess you could say it's future-proofing. I think 4K will become, over the next year to 18 months will become become more common so I guess if you're kind of if you're the kind of person that keeps a phone for two years then that does mean that as the TVs become more prevalent uh, 4k TVs then you're ready and you're already able to, to film in it so um, I probably should have pointed out I would I would hope you're already now aware of all the different modes that Samsung has within it so I want to try the golf one I don't I don't think I had that in the uh, in the s4 Take pictures of a golf swing and play, play them back. Place the subject in the centre. Oh, actually, you've got to be quite specific. I'm not sure I can do that down the old top golf. But uh, pretty cool, though. Don't you? That'd be very handy to some people. So yeah, all the usual. Oh, surround shot. That's a bit different. Is that? Oh, so this is this the? Can't bother to read it all. I'm going to go ahead and assume. Well, that's kind of cool, actually. Look, I've not tried that yet. So this must be where it does the the uh, uh, panorama, panorama. No, what they're called? Photosphere. Sorry, I've had a bit of a mental blank there. But the the Samsung are going to call it a surround shot, apparently. So yeah, all the usual Samsung features in the camera. 13 megapixel uh, shooter around the back there with flash, which I find to be very good. I'll pop a few sample photos in at this point, so you can see. So then we move on to the software. Now obviously it comes with TouchWiz. There are some reasonable features in TouchWiz, things like with the dialer you can swipe one way or swipe another way on the name to either text or to call that person. Um, you get all the bits like if you've read a, a text message from somebody, you then put it to your ear, it's gonna call them. You know, there are some pretty good features, but at the same time, it's quite ugly. And it's, you know, why don't they let us choose perhaps the colors? Why do I want that green color there anymore? It just doesn't, it doesn't really fit with the design. You know, can I not just have that, can I give me a selector so I can say I want it white? You know, that to me that'll make a massive difference, it'll change the background colour as well. If it, I don't know, yeah, touch with generally, it's just quite ugly, I would say. Um, I don't know, that's your choice. Some, some people like it, some people won't. It's not that hard to mask, in some ways you may have noticed I've got Nova Launcher on the front here rather than... Oh, oh dear. But here's another example, something like S Health, to some people that could be very handy. Um, not a big fan myself. I was quite impressed by Watch On actually. So you can program in um, what area you're in, what um, you know, what provider you have. So for me, Virgin Media. You can program in what TV you have and what set-top box you use, um, and then you can control using the infrared. You can control the TV with the uh, phone. Also, you, you, it will give you sort of suggestions of things to watch. Um, just for you, is that? Oh, is this one already, is it? So I, I do actually have Top Gear on the TV at the moment, muted. Um, so it's not actually a bad a bad application. Um, it's not quite as good as Zbox, perhaps, and Zbox will link, if you've got something like a TiVo, it'll use Wi-Fi to connect in and control your TV rather than the infrared, but still, it's actually a pretty a pretty cool app. Um, this This phone at the moment, is 4.3 if you can see that 
but they are, I'm going to double check now actually, they are rolling out the, I think it's 4.4.2 update. I'm hearing some people are receiving, I don't know if that's just in like America or, you know, they do they do tend to release in a staggered process. It might still be a few weeks before, before it comes to me here. Um, but the 4.4.2 is on its way uh, with all of its all of its goodness. Yeah, so we're still up to date. Uh, some other things you get with TouchWiz is things like the air gestures. I actually quite like if I'm in the middle of a phone call and, uh, and the screen goes off enough. I'm on you know on speakerphone, perhaps it's on my desk. Um, rather than find the power button, you can literally just wave your hand over the top. The screen comes back away, and you can carry on. So things like that, you know, they're they're quite cool. TouchWiz and Samsung, they do have some good ideas, um, including including the stylus, I would say. So that's um, I did mention it earlier. Let's take it out. Automatically, it opens up the air command options. So we can do things like S Finder. So if I wanted to so search for content on your device, I'll find more on the web. Thank you. So if I wanted, for example, no, it's a bit odd. I don't know why I'm using. So there you go, straight away, watch on. I was going to say I'm looking for watch on and not up it pops. Now in any text entry box, if I hover, you see that little icon that's appeared? If I tap on that, it opens up a box and I can and I can then write watch. Oh no, this is a, oh yeah, there we go. So I can just tell it I think search and it's gonna search for watch and there it is, look. But at the same time, there are other bits that it's finding as well. Oh my goodness, so search the web, help, contacts. Chrome, so just search basically everything. So if I, I wonder if I searched, let's just get rid of that. I'm a I'm a Redskins fan. Let's just see what comes up. All sorts. Anyway, so that's the. That's the S, S Finder thing. So if I go back to my home page, now it still it shows you've got a little icon there saying it knows the pen is out and about. If I hover, nothing in particular. You see the little you see the little dot appear. Um, if I press the button on the side, up up comes the air commander again. So let's show you now pen window. Basically, I'm going to draw draw a window. It's then going to say, okay, what do you want to put in that window? And I'm going to say the calculator. So now, in that window, well, I can move around the screen. I've got my little calculator. I believe I can minimise it to a... There it is, look. I can maximise it to be full screen. Oh, wait, how do I bring it back to... I'm not sure <laughs> I'm not sure I can get it back into the small thing. So that's that's one option, the, the little last window, which is kind of cool. Um, screen right, which means it will take a take a screenshot and I can then annotate. Uh, oh I can't simple simple calendar. I can then share that somewhere, I can save it, I can also sort of just get rid of. I don't particularly want it, I'll just I'll discard it. Back we come up, scrapbooker. Actually forget what that one is. I'll draw I'll draw around an area with a pen to collect it in your scrapbook. So you just see some on the web. And again, I could just circle around. It's collected content, so it's not much about where I drew, it's taking a, a shot of that. I can tag it, I can do all sorts. I can imagine that being quite handy. I don't do a lot of web browsing to be honest on my phone, but and then action memo. Now it's gonna tell us here we go. So somebody says, you know, you you in a you in a club, you're taking a girl's digits as you do. Um, you whip out your note three, she changes her mind and off she goes. If you're lucky enough, you got some nerdy girl, she starts giving you her number. O two O eight four. Oh dear, that's an odd four. Let's see how we get on with this. I'm running out of space, so I've got to put a couple of ones in there. So there's my there's my number. I forget which one to do. Link to action. You can select a specific part of the memo by drawing the right. Yeah. So, well, that's that is that's basically it. And there it is. So that's kind of cool. Or you could do it. Let's. Uh, 
Where's my, where's my eraser? I can erase that all away. Let's go back to my pen. Now, one thing I'll point out as well, I can I can rest my hand. Oh, I say that. I was going to say I can rest my hand on the screen and it doesn't. That's odd. I could have sworn I'd been able to do that before. Maybe it's just not in the in the pad. Or maybe it's not in that area. If I shrink it a little bit. No, it's still going to die. That's odd. I was sure that I'd. Um, I was sure that I'd been able to lean on the screen. Anyway, okay, well, that's a bit of a disappointment then. Um, but you can also, Andy, at email dot. Oh dear, I'd be surprised if we can figure that one. Are we so we're gonna. Oh, that was text rather than come back. There we go, sorry, the at sign is going to be email. Email it with Gmail. Just this once. Andy at email dot om. So it, it slightly, it slightly got it wrong. But again, kind of cool, kind of could be handy. Um, I do quite like the stylus. If we go into something like Evernote, um, and I say make me a new note, now again, any time there's a text entry, let's just, uh, if I let's, let's go landscape, because that means I don't have to lean much on the phone, I can now, I don't know why I did it partially lowercase, partially uppercase, write on the screen and it gets recognized and well you get the idea and when I'm ready I press done I can now write on the screen and it gets recognized and and again I would just need to then go back in and okay oh See, it worked. Out. I was surprised it worked that out as a Y. That was a pretty, that looked like a G. Carry on. Mm, not so good with the dot dot dot. But then I wasn't too good with it myself. So, yeah, actually, I really quite like that. When I, I didn't realise that I could do that initially. I thought, well, how do I use the stylus with something like Evernote? So I went to a meeting and I just was punching away. But I can see I can see that being quite handy, actually. Um, and that I could, I would make use because. It is, there are times it is easier just to scribble away rather than punch away on the keyboard, I, I think. I don't know. Let me know, actually. Let me know what you think. Would you make use of the stylus or not? Well, I think that's quite a handy feature. Um, so, let's see. What have we got left? I mentioned the battery. We even we looked at the battery earlier. It's a 3200 mAh battery. I really struggled to get below 50% in a day. Uh, the, I think the lowest I got was 39% because I was driving for, for about three hours. I was tethering from this device to something else that was that was sat naving, and um, I was also connected via Bluetooth and streaming music from this for three hours. And at the end of the day, I still had 39% battery left after sort of 15, 16 hours of use. So this one, as you can see, I've not charged it overnight. I plugged it in briefly, as I think I mentioned earlier, to get some some data off, um, some video, and it ha has mainly been on Wi-Fi. It's been on. I have been out and about. You can see the screen on time isn't massive. Probably an hour, hour and a half look. So not huge. Um, but I have been playing Beyond Pods and stuff with it where the screen is off but it's still active. So you can see obviously the wait time. You know, nothing, you would have to class it as light use, I think. But still, I've gone, you know, I've almost gone a whole day, as in 24 hours, and I've still got 44% left. So with light use, I think quite easily. You know, I'm I'm expecting I will be able to leave this until tonight to charge, and it didn't hasn't last been charged since yesterday, yesterday morning. So the battery very very good, but then 3,200 milliamp hours you kind of expect it. I haven't really done any optimizations. You know, there's lots of hints and tips. I've done some videos with some hints and tips of of how to optimize your battery. I haven't done any of that at all on this phone, and it's going to last me two days. So with optimization, I wouldn't be surprised if you get to three days with kind of light mid to light use. And then 
And then finally, if we sort of, if I mention the sort of the hackability, the ROM scene on the Note 3 generally looks very good. There is a CM11 nightly thread on XTA developers, um, and there looks to be just a whole load of ROM options. Like I said, this this phone particularly popular. I think a lot of developers have it, therefore a lot of developers obviously making their own ROMs for it. So definitely if you're the kind of person that likes to check out some custom ROMs, um, you won't be disappointed with the Note 3. Now the whole Nox thing comes into play though, and I've got to be honest, I don't know a great deal about Nox, I've never looked into it much, it's relatively new um, by Samsung, security features enabled, but it also gives you some problems when you're trying to unlock and put custom ROMs. So, I don't have the information for you now, but I would suggest please do look look into it before you, uh, if well, either make a purchase or before you go about changing your ROM. So, all in all, what do I think of the Note 3? Um, I think very quickly you get used to the size. Initially, you kind of go, whoa, but, but then very quickly, within a day or so, it just seems normal. And when you pick up a smaller, regular-sized phone, actually it feels almost like a little toy. Um, you get used to holding the device a little bit different. So, yeah, if you hold it like you normally would perhaps with a phone, you've got no chance of reaching that top corner. But if you, you start holding it like so, or even a bit further out so it kind of rests on your fingers, and all of a sudden, you can just about reach the corners. You do have to accept that there will be times really it's going to be a two-handed device though. Um, it, you know, it's just too big perhaps at times or for some people's hands to be able to, to operate the whole, the whole device. Um, I, think that, I don't think there's any question of the amount of power within this device though. Uh, perhaps one of the benefits of it having, you know, being so big is there's ample space for them to cram all of the tech and the power into it. Okay, it's the same sort of processor and, and GPU as some of the other devices, but with that much, this much RAM and, and uh, all the options, it's just, you know, there's just no question it's up there with the best of them without that. Uh, does the stylus make it a bit more business friendly? I don't know. Uh, it's one thing that I've thought about that I probably use is at work if I'm going to a meeting and I'm going to take notes. I, I perhaps would just scribble away with the stylus instead. It's perhaps a bit easier than typing away and always recognise it wrong about that because the, the handwriting recognition, I mean, you saw it earlier. I'm not the neatest, but it, it worked pretty much flawlessly. Um, so I would suppose what I would say is don't dismiss it just because of its size. Don't go, oh, it's way too big for me. Give it a go. I know it's easier said than done because how, do how do you give it a go for a few days without buying it? Um, because you're going to a shop and you'll pick up, oh, it's too big, I'm going to move on. But all I would say is, you know, you do very quickly, you get used to it, and you start taking it for granted almost and accepting that's normal. And like I say, you go to back to my Nexus 5 and it feels like a little toy almost. So personally, I really like it. Whether or not I'll shell out to get my own, um, it is £540 on clove.co.uk right now, the, ex, the refurb version. Um, so do I shell out that much money? I'm not sure I do. Having said that, if the house got broke into and all of my phones got stolen um, and I claimed my insurance money and I had to go out and buy a new phone, I think almost undoubtedly it would be the Note 3. It really is very good. I really like using it. Watching videos on the screen this size, browsing the web on the screen this size. You know, a phone these days, speaking to somebody is like a, I wouldn't even say secondary. They might even, you know, because maybe texting is second. I don't know. It's Speaking to somebody on the phone is actually, for, definitely for me, is a much lower priority. Browsing the web, watching videos, using it as a sort of entertainment device, playing games maybe, not for me, but for many, is a much higher priority. And on a screen this size, it just, it, it's just brilliant. It's amazing. So, there we go. The Samsung Galaxy Note 3, for me, probably the best phone around at the moment. Let me know your thoughts down below. My name's Andy. I'll catch you all again soon.